Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. Be sure to check out all the links in the description below, links to my website, Instagram, you know, consider subscribing if you haven't. There's new stuff like joining as a member to get special perks. There's super thanks enabled now. If you find a particular video helpful, click that super thanks and give me what's the equivalent of a tip. But every little bit that I get and make from the channel helps me continue bringing the content. That hopefully you find entertaining, enjoyable, and informational. This video is one that's been a long time coming. I wish I had gotten around to it sooner, I just haven't. Sometime back I did a short that very briefly showed a Miyota 9015 movement in an SKX 007 case. It's a project that I did for uh, one of my clients who wanted a custom movement holder to fit a Miyota 9015. It's an automatic movement, it's got a date, and put that in an SKX case. It's a combo I hadn't done before. In the description below, you'll find a link to my custom movement holders page where you can see sort of the process, the cost that goes into creating one of these. If you wanted me to do something like that for you, I've always got some of these projects like this going on for myself or for other people. But this is one I wanted to show. It's a common movement, a common case, and why not put them together? Quick wrist check for today. I am wearing my Grand Seiko SBGW275. This particular watch I reviewed not that long ago. Go check out that video. It's simply beautiful. We basically went straight from winter to summer where I live, but the flowers are coming out blooming. This is a great summer look. And this is one of the best examples from GS as far as I'm concerned. The SBGW series, almost every model is appealing. <laughs> if you ever get a chance to look at this particular series, do it. You will not regret it, whether it's just to try it on or consider buying one. Let's just hop right into it. Let's talk custom movement holders. Now, I am going to say for this review that yesterday I did a deep clean of my grill outside and I still have some remnants of the grease in my fingers and such. So if you're like, Brian, your hands are dirty today. Well, it's because I did a deep clean of my grill yesterday. And what that means is I'm ready for summer and I'm going to have some grilled goods this evening. All right. So I've done some videos on other movement holders before where I've shown a little bit more in depth in the process, like the actual drafting process in AutoCAD. I'm not going to go as detailed into that on here. This one just has a lot more complexity to it. What I'll do is I'm going to intersperse uh, the CAD view and specific parts as I reference them as I walk through the evolution of this particular movement holder and then show you what it looks like with the pieces all in the case. But really the first step in this is figuring out with the dial on the movement, how high does that need to sit so that the stem location is at the correct height for the case that I'm putting it in. Here I've got the, again the SKX007 case and that means creating a spacer. You could use a generic a movement side spacer. So this goes on the back of the dial between the dial and the movement. This has a thickness of 0.17 millimeter. You could use one or two of these and maybe get away with one or two of these instead of having a spacer that sits on the dial side between the chapter ring and the dial. But the thickness on this is about 0.32 give or take so it's a, a little bit thicker than this movement side but you could come up with a, a movement side design that would work just as well I've done that in some earlier examples with some variants of the Ronda 515 quartz movement uh, the 24H.2 which has a movement side as opposed to a dial side spacer however I you know I kind of okay with the dial side spacers because it gives a point of contrast I mean, they blend in really well. It depends on what color you use, but you can print in black or silver or white, any other color to either blend in or provide a point of contrast between the chapter ring. In this particular case, it's this brush still with black markers. You know, if you put in a black space like I do here, it blends in, you really don't see it much. And that then, of course, depends on the dial color. You put in a white dial, you'll see that little tinge of black between the silver and the uh, dial. So it's uh, really up to you, but this has a thickness of about 0.32 millimeter. Now, once I have this in the case, you're not gonna be able to really see it very well. It blends into, it, since it's a black case as well. You can see this is quite thin. This is about half the thickness of the same spacer that goes into the same case, but for the Ronda 515 movements. You can see there's, there's a distinct difference in there in the height. So, but every one of those tenths uh, or hundredths of a millimeter matter when you're talking watches, getting the, the height correct. And so this will sit nicely down inside between the dial and the chapter ring. 
Usually I'll use like a toothpick to basically get it set into place. Again, once it's in there, it's like, oh, you can't really see it much. So anyway, the spacer is the first thing to create easy to do that in CAD. That just takes a few seconds. You know, when I create a brand new custom holder for somebody. I like have a hundred dollar flat fee for the drafting. And then there's the cost of the prints and I split cost on parts if I don't have them already. And if you really watch this video and look at the process, you'll see it takes time. It takes effort to get this right. That's why it costs money. Custom parts are, you know, that's not something just should be cheap. It's it takes time to do this stuff. So that's making that clear. So I printed the spacer in black. And so the first um, holder I printed was also in uh, the black PLA, which is the material that I used for this, which is a type of plastic. And I knew that this was going to have some sort of a ridge on the bottom and wasn't sure how high it needed to be with the case back. I sort of estimate it first. I do some very quick measurements. I know what the notches should look like, kind of where they can sit on the top of the holder. Knew it was going to need a cutout for the stem, obviously. And I was testing, well, what's it like to print an extruded tab on one of these spacers on the inside? I've done things like these half circles before. You kind of see there, but that starts at the bottom and works its way toward the top. That's going to print fine. But when you have a place that's kind of sitting midair, on a part. My printer, which is a Lulzbot Mini 2, only has one extruder. It means there's one line for material to come out. It doesn't have two extruders. Some fancier or higher cost printers will have two extruders. It could be used for multiple colors on a print, or often what one is used for is to print support material. So imagine putting some sort of support material underneath of this so that whenever it starts to print in that location that there's something underneath of it supporting it so it prints correctly. Um, if you have a printer with just one extruder then you don't have that luxury. Now I could design a little pillar if you want to call it that to sit on the ground underneath of this to help give it support so you can manually put that in print with the same material make it a little bit thinner easy to break off or to use it an exacto knife or something to cut it off. That's that's a possibility here too but I wanted to see how it would print just with you know, normally uh, without having any sort of a support. And it actually does fine on this particular occasion. Wouldn't always be the case. All right, so I did a couple rounds of saying, okay, do I have these internal cylinders in the right location? Are these tabs in the right location? Do I need to extend the diameter a little bit? I got the height correct. How does the case back sit around it? Does it feel nice and snug? Are the tolerances tight? freely rotates, but with just a hair of friction in there. How does it sit around the movement? The reason why this extends a little bit from the side on the bottom is so that it's, it has the whole dial to use. You know, take advantage of the space that you do have. You want to have as robust a holder as possible given the space and dimensions you have, diameters you have to deal with. So you go through, through sort of those initial height, diameter, locations of, this, of the cylinders or supports, tabs, making sure that's all sort of correct and situated. Now, as you look at these holders, this is kind of where I started on uh, the left side here and then working this direction toward the final version of it. Other things that, you know, I have to deal with is, okay, do I get the height correct of, let's say the tab, try to get this in the light where you can see, you know, the height of the tab is different, you know, relative to the top of the holder. And these locations where these little tabs will sit, and I started out with using one tab, I thought, well, one tab will be enough, is if you look at this Miyota 9015 movement, there are locations where the case screws would go, but this is sitting in a case that doesn't have a ledge or isn't intended to go into that particular case, but you can see there's case location for a tab and a screw on both sides of this. Well, I'm just taking advantage of those locations. In fact, you could use one of these tabs here and mill just a little hole and then use it to screw in and connect and secure the holder to the movement. That's one reason I designed it in, but just also it sit down inside of this little recess very nicely and just add that little bit more element of security. If you want to tap a hole into this and screw it down, fine, you have that option. I don't know if it's particularly necessary on this movement. I mean, this thing is sitting right up against the case back when it gets screwed down. So it's not moving away from the movement anyway. The tolerances are pretty spot on inside of the case. So you don't have to worry about it too much. After sort of the initial figuring out external internal dimensions on this particular holder, 
there was the matter of the case back. And for this movement to fit really well with this case and case back, I needed to make where the case back was sitting a little bit thinner than the base. Again, I want to have as much support where possible, but for this to actually fit snug and secure with out also interfering with the rotation, I needed to carve essentially a little bit of a thinner uh, edge around the top half or so of the holder. It's one of these subtle complexities to this particular design. And then it's okay getting the height correct because I remember I'm also dealing with this cutout for the stem. This is one of the first runs at messing around with that particular aspect of this holder. This one is not cut deep enough. You can see it's still sitting a little bit high there on the inside. And so let me find a, a version that's cut a little bit deeper. You see that's got a little bit more depth to it. Goes past where the stem cutout is. And then that one's correct. You can see it's just a hair away from the base sitting in there comfortably. This can rotate the correct amount of friction around it as the case back gets screwed in the case without twisting or wanting to move the holder or putting pressure on the tabs. So you can also see that the little notches I put on top sit right against the case back. That provides a little bit of cushion. If, it gets, uh, if it's a little bit tall, those will just compress a little bit. It's not actually impacting the holder itself, just those notches on top. You kind of get the purpose of some of these little tabs and this, that, and other on the top of these movements. One of the other steps I went from this moment to this moment was one tab for the movement as opposed to two. And then it's a matter of getting the rotation on these, the number of degrees correct in terms of where they lie on the interior of this and making sure they fit on the movement correctly. So go moving from one tab to two tabs. The other aspect of these tabs is getting the amount that it extends from the interior of the holder and getting the radius and the diameter of these tabs correct that fits in the tabs, the, the recesses on the movement as, as well as possible. And so those are the steps that I'm going through here. You can see that sometimes I could get a print where there's a little bit of a gap there, but these print where they come out just a little bit thick, a little bit weird because there's no support underneath. Um, this shows a good example. You can see how that's a little bit thicker. You could print with that kind of height, but what I do is when this comes out of the printer, here's sort of the final version of it, it might have a little bit more of that thickness to it, but then just to make it a little bit more solid, I'll say, I'll take just some flat pliers and I'll give this a nice little stiff pinch and it will sort of compress that plastic and then it looks really good. You could also can mill a hole in it if you wanted to and use it to secure a screw. And so here we get to the final version of this where we've got the recess cut around the edge. You can see that's fairly thin. So what all is going on with this movement holder? Well, we've got the base, this extension that sticks out a little bit more, so a little bit more thickness at the base. This is taking advantage again of the dial and this extra space around the edge. We have these sort of cylinders. It's a half a cylinder whenever you see it on the movement. But we have the notches on top. We have the tabs. We have the cutout for the stem. There's a lot going on with this holder to make this movement feel nice and at home in this particular case. With this particular choice in design of having two tabs, it's not as big an issue if you just have one, is that you have to get this on the movement and it has a rotor, which at some point will interfere with one of those tab locations. So it can take a little bit of finesse to get this on the movement. So here's where the stem will go. So that's where I'm going to set this part down. Now notice the rotor in relation to the tabs. See that one's going to go, you can see this one's going to go right there but then the rotor is in the way on this side. So what you have to do is sort of get it angled down on one side. Then we're gonna flip the rotor as much as we can. You can see that that went over, slid over that tab. And then I can set down the other side and voila. The other point of finesse in this design is those tabs, and I mentioned I compressed them, those have to sit in that recess and not be too high or thick enough 
that the rotor can't easily glide over the top of them. That rotor needs to be able to spin freely. And so you have to make sure that that design allows for that rotor to freely spin and those tabs aren't going to interfere. Again, you could screw those down if you really wanted to. Now you can see what I mean by taking advantage of the diameter of the dial. This holder extends all the way to the edge of this dial, a beat up test dial for all kinds of weird experiments I do. You can see those in some of my other videos. So then we've got a little bit more of thickness at the bottom, a little bit thinner at the top, again, to accommodate the case back when it sits over the top. And now this movement holder is secure around it. And there's the cutout for the stem. Again, wanting to give enough room, but just enough room for that stem to be able to get into uh, the, the case into the movement correctly. And it's just a matter of getting this angled down into the case. It sits down nice and smooth. Let me rotate this just a tad. And there we go. We have the Miyota 9015 inside of the SKX case. There is literally no movement in any direction. Again, another reason for extending that edge on the holder to the edge of the dial. That thing is snug. Coming back to that recess I cut around the top half of this for the case back, if I hadn't cut the top half of this movement a little bit thinner, there would not be enough space for this threaded portion of the case back to sit between it would just be too tight and it would just try to rotate the entire thing. Of course, once the stem is in here, uh, that movement's not gonna move very much. Of course, put the gasket on here, you know, if you were actually putting it together. And then this will fit down in there as it should. There's no weird tension. It's not gonna start rotating on me. And there we go. That's in there nice and secure. There's no shaking. All I can hear is the rotor inside of the case. That's that. Pretty simple, right? No, it takes it takes time. It's a it's a lot of work to make this happen. Again, there's a lot going on here. Again, you can see the rotor sort of freely moving in there. It's one of the things I'm quite um, happy about with this particular design. See how close that is. How uh, accurate of a design that is to make those work. It just add, there's other things you can take advantage on on different movements. That just happens to be what's available on this one. These locations, you can see there are a couple more. Could have done something there, but really the two are enough. Everything you add just makes it more complex of a design, takes more time to print, etc. That is the Miyota 9015 in an SKX 007 case. Let's check out. That's another custom case and movement combo in the books. The Miyota 9015 in an SKX 007 case. As always, hoping you got something out of seeing a little bit more about the process, the steps I go through in slowly adding on and, and figuring out the dimensions of the movement holder, and in this case, adding different tabs, little notches, cylinders, tabs, etc., getting everything through time and multiple prints, specced out to the T so that it fits perfectly inside the case, providing that interface between a movement and a case that weren't initially intended to go together. I've said this in other videos, this is probably one of my favorite aspects of the work that I do and helps other people, but, but also I learn a lot with every new combination I put together. And this is what it's really all about. This is a whole learning process, always has been since I started on this years ago and still going strong. All right, now that's it. If you want more information, Follow the links in the description below. I'm gonna go grill. I'm out.